In this video, we're going to talk about Andre Jick's $2.1 million loss video where he talks to Pro the Doge, who has a million dollar Dogecoin portfolio, about what he's thinking now that he's kind of he's dropped millions in value. He's at pretty much a million dollars at a 25 cent per Dogecoin valuation. And there's a lot of things going on in this video. I'm going to talk about three catalysts of where Dogecoin can go. And this is really related to a lot of different cryptos because things move together. And Bitcoin is the ultimate thing that moves the other coins. So we're going to talk about the three catalysts there. I also want to talk about kind of a dangerous uh, mental trap that I think Pro the Doge is unfortunately in. Now, I wish him the best with hitting the $10 per Dogecoin goal of his. You know, Dogecoin hitting a dollar would be amazing for him. Uh, and he will have a $4 million portfolio at that, which would be amazing. Hitting $10 would be a $40 million portfolio, which be, would be amazing. Right now he's at $1 million, which is amazing. And I think that that's the biggest issue is when you put yourself out there and you say, you know, I'm not going to sell until it hits this amount, you are, and you stick to it, it might seem like you are brave and bold and you're sticking to your word, but in reality, you have to be flexible in your path to reach your goals. You got to be stubborn with your goal, but you can be flexible with the path to get there. So I'm a bit worried that no matter the circumstance, no matter what happens, he's not going to sell until he sees that exact number of, now he's saying a dollar. So he seems to be moving it down his actual time he's going to sell and the percent uh, in which he's going to sell. He's not going to sell his whole portfolio. But this is a danger because I actually did this and I really regret this with my portfolio. So I did a very similar thing and my goal with the crash of the S&P 500 VOO is that I was, I had this plan of buying more and more shares uh, as things dipped. And the way I did it was at the beginning, I did not dollar cost average in terms of time. I actually averaged it or I, I didn't average it specifically. I had levels. So I basically said, look, if it hits this level, I'll buy this much, this level, buy this much. The danger with that is you might be off by a couple of dollars or in Dogecoin, a couple of cents, and you might never buy. You want to know when my real big buy time was going to be? When it hit 200, and guess what? It never did. <laughs> it was at 200.55. I never saw it hit the 200 mark, but I saw it hit around 204, and I was like, you know what? I'm sticking to my word. I'm not going to buy until it hits that 200. That was the dumbest thing I could have done. My mentor told me that that was stupid, and <laughs> he only told me after I told him, hey, you know, I was waiting until I was going to hit the point. He's like, no, just, just keep buying it buy and layer in. So that was some really stupid thing that I did. I got myself in a mental block and I put myself in a position where I thought I was being bold and I'm sticking true to my word and I wasn't getting, letting my emotions get in the way. But when you have things like this, which are solid tiers that you have to hit before you do something, uh, you're, you're setting yourself up for a pretty dumb outcome. Because if you're just off by, say, the Dogecoin millionaires off by 10 cents, it's kind of going to get screwed there. So I would, if I was in his position, you know, I would start selling off a certain percent um, that that way I have some cash, I lock in some profits, and then the rest I would let run if I was a true believer in the long-term prospects of Dogecoin. Am I a believer in the long-term prospects? I don't know, but let's talk about the three catalysts for where this can go. And what these three catalysts are really are based on the biggest uh, correlation. And the biggest correlation that Dogecoin follows is Bitcoin. Same thing with Ethereum, same thing with Cardano. And there are three catalysts that I want to talk about. Catalyst number one is if new institutions come in and buy. So we're talking about new banks that want to have a certain allocation in Bitcoin and they start publicly saying that they bought, right? You can look at Bitcoin at the 35,000 rate when Tesla said, hey, uh, we are now buying 1.5 billion in Bitcoin. And it wasn't too long after that, that Bitcoin shot up and basically doubled. So if we see more institutions, more companies basically having a Bitcoin allocation for their balance sheet, that is going to boost up Bitcoin. 
and just bring a lot of credibility because remember they're the authority if this has been underwritten by Tesla or by big in investment companies or big insurance companies that believe that having Bitcoin is actually a hedge against other things and it's safer to have Bitcoin than have cash because there is some hedge against when things go wrong maybe Bitcoin goes right and so that is catalyst number one that you want to look out for. Catalyst number two is about accepting Bitcoin for transactions. Elon Musk said that he is going to start accepting Bitcoin for Tesla transactions once we see a 50% renewable energy for Bitcoin mining. Once we see that plus a positive trend, we are Tesla is going to start accepting Bitcoin. Now you can look at some of the data to come up and see maybe when that might be if you see some trends happening. The third item that we're going to talk about is inflation. Inflation is a big one. Now the big idea of Bitcoin is that it is digital gold. The idea of gold is that it's a protection against inflation and whether prices go up and consumer pricing goes up it's okay because gold has a fixed amount of supply and therefore it rises with the prices now gold has not necessarily done that in the last few months even though inflationary pressures have kind of mounted and gone through different news cycles uh you know but typically the idea of gold is to be a great defense against inflation. It's still too early to determine if Bitcoin truly is that, but the idea of the fixed supply of Bitcoin gives us some kind of momentum that if there is inflation, maybe Bitcoin is a good asset to have. So that would be another catalyst that drives up Bitcoin and drives up Dogecoin with it. So those are some of the things that they didn't mention. And I just want to share my ideas of the catalysts of Doge, which are basically built on the catalyst of Bitcoin. And those are kind of fundamental ideas, right? New institutions buying, new companies accepting it, and inflationary. But there's also qualitative things like a new Elon Musk tweet. Who the heck knows? So we'll wait, we'll see. I hope that when you invest, uh, even if you're up a lot, you don't stay stuck in that trap of saying, I'm not gonna sell until this exact point. Because if you're up massively, it might not be a bad idea to start pocketing some gains. However, that one thing is debatable if you're a believer in the stock or the coin in the long term. Thanks so much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe, and I hope to see you soon.